then there was two. He seems better. My fiancé should have got that help. Yes, Tom told me your fiancé is um, no longer with us. That were him. Gosh, looks just like the football the George Best. Score <laughs> <laughs> 37 caps for Northern Ireland, 9 international goals. It isn't George Best, is it? No, it's not. Was your fiancé a good writer? Yes. It's time to come clean, Matt. After 25 years, yes, it's time. I could write plays. Get the characters on and off the stage, write the dialogue. At only 22, he could do that and make it interesting. We were in the same class together at night school. I asked him for a copy of his play. It was perfect. Four-hander, each character interweaving their lives around each other. Well plotted, well researched. Well you nicked it, well you know it. It wasn't one of those post-modern flashing the pans. It had guts, <coughs> grit, and humour. You wanted it all, Matt. You set him up. Yes, I wanted that play. <coughs> I was in immune drug research. I could get anything. Something goes missing here, something gets spoiled there. You wouldn't believe how easy it is to put a drug collection together. I thought if I could just get him to take a parcel to say Leeds or Bradford, the police would get an anonymous <coughs> tip off, pick him up. I could take the script change the names, add a few minor plot twists, take it to an agent. <coughs> How to get him to take the parcel without implicating me, that was the hardest part. Yeah, but you were a suspect for years. <coughs> that was my stroke of genius. Implicate myself fully. Make it obvious that I was involved so that it looked like a setup. For my part, I had my records straight. I didn't personally see the drugs delivered or incinerated, although I would of course have handled one or two of the bottles. No, my only fault was allowing this young man into the laboratories. <coughs> he was doing research for a new play and I trusted him. What could he do but tell the truth? Police came, look at my books, everything accounted for. But why Sheffield? <laughs> Fell into my lap. I'm going to visit my dad in Sheffield next week, he said. I gave him the parcel and a bogus address. Gave the police a full description of him and the time he'd be arriving at the train station. It worked like a dream. How was I to know the silly sod would go and kill himself? There's nothing I can do to make up for his life and I feel sick when I think that was me. The play went on. After 25 years, it had to be heard. I don't see a penny of it. All the money goes to a children's home that my husband told me about. <coughs> so, what's the chances of us catching this bird flu then, Doc? About 0.1 to the power of 16. <coughs> the human form is dermatologically contact. Someone you know has to have it, or someone, something they have touched has to be virally infected. What's the matter? Matt? Um, it's a long story, but it would appear I'm responsible for the death of a young man. You too? <coughs> What's the odds that we can all be responsible for the death of a, one person? Around 55 million to one. <coughs> Funny thing about odds and us. What's the odds of a bomb being on a plane? 16,000 to one or 0.1 to the power of six. Cut the odds to zero. Put in a bomb. That's not the point. We are all responsible for the death of a young man. Who, 
What's your name? Jean Poole. I know. Poole. Dioxyribonucleic acid. Everybody says that. <coughs> <coughs> She's been having us on. No, we are responsible. We're responsible for her death, the three of us. My name should have been Jean Gnome. <coughs> Did she show you a photograph of her fiance? Did it look like a footballer? Yes, it looked like George Best. I, I held it in my hand. You? I thought it looked like Nobby Styles. Don't touch her! She, hold, she has the classic symptoms of avian flu. If you were to touch any part of it, you'd be infected. Thanks, Bush. You saved my life. Don't speak Twice. too soon. We all held that photograph. Well, that's nonsense, isn't I it? I did feel a chill in here. This is Plague News Update. Take this immunologist, Thomas Hanlon Rush, in the backwater laboratory in North Yorkshire, has found a cure for avian flu. His wife, Mia Rush, said to reporters today, I am very proud of my husband. I'm glad he chose to stay in immunology and wasn't tempted to stray further afield. Amongst the famous to praise him was the wife of the late playwright, Leonard Noll, Mrs. Jean Noll. That man is a great man that he has dedicated his life to teaching and immunology. If it wasn't for that man today, my late husband Leonard would not achieve what he did in his short lifetime. And even the ex-chief constable of Sheffield, the villain CEO, <coughs> has praised him for the great work the doctor has done in the community with young offenders, giving them interesting, of all things, bird spotting. Thanks. <laughs> You're done good. You're stuck at it. Well, what can I say? Thank you, everyone. Man of the decade, Thomas Howard Rush. For he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow.